The Binance Cryptocurrency Exchange recently grabbed headlines with its announcement that it is going to automatically convert users USDC, USDP, and TUSD deposits into their proprietary BUSD stablecoin. Now, many people were quick to call this out as a power grab by the Binance Exchange, saying that Binance is doing this to gain an edge over their competitors that issue those other stablecoins. On the flip side, Binance maintains that this move is designed to increase liquidity and enhance a customer's trading experience. Regardless of who we decide to believe here, there is one important question. Specifically, what is liquidity? How does liquidity work? And why is liquidity so important to cryptocurrency traders? Well, I guess that's actually three questions, but we will answer all of them in today's video. Hey everyone and welcome back. This is the Part-Time Economist and in today's video we are talking about order books, liquidity, cryptocurrency trading, a lot of really cool topics. But before we get into the material, I did want to say, as with all of my videos, this is not financial advice. I'm not saying Binance is good. I'm not saying Binance is bad, that you should or shouldn't use them. I'm just trying to use current events to help illustrate a broader principle in the cryptocurrency markets. Specifically, what is liquidity? Now, I like to say that liquidity is the ease and efficiency with which we can conduct a transaction. And that definition might not make a whole lot of sense right off the bat, so let me give an example. Let's suppose that you're a casual investor and you want to buy Bitcoin, Amazon, Tesla, doesn't really matter. You're likely to ask someone, what's the price of Bitcoin? What's the price of Tesla? But in reality, there's really no such thing as the price. Rather, there's lots of different people that have different amounts of cryptocurrency that they're willing to buy or sell at different price points. And when we combine all of these, we get something known as the order book. The order book reflects all the people that are willing to buy, all the people that are willing to sell, the prices and quantities that they're willing to do so at. So I've pulled a order book for some random stock, doesn't matter what it is. Um, I'm just illustrating the point here. On the left hand side, we have shares and bid. On the right hand side, we have shares and ask. Now, essentially what this tells us is how many shares are available to buy at a specific price. And when I was first getting started, I used to get bid and ask confused, which is which. The way that I remembered it is the price is right. So remember, he would always come on and he would say, what do you bid, right? He's saying, how much would you give for this? So we see 89 shares. People are willing to buy 89 shares at a price of 62.14. Now, when I used to go to flea markets, you wouldn't really ask people, what's the price? You would say, what are you asking for that, right? So someone is asking 62.18 for one share. That means that's the price at which they would let go of that share and sell it. So... When we look at all of this put together, let's suppose that you're trying to buy a thousand shares. Now, that first share you're going to buy at 62.18 because that's the price. But once that one share is gone, there's no one else willing to sell at 62.18. The next available price is 62.19. So if you want to fill your order of a thousand shares, you'll get that first share at 62.18. Your next four shares, you've got to pay 62.19. Or sorry, your next 400 shares, uh, 62.19. Moving down, then you go to 62.20. Then you go to 62.24. And you finally fill that order at 62.29 for the last shares. So you can see that the more shares you buy, the more your price drifts away from that original price point. Now, this is why liquidity is so important. Let's suppose instead of this being units of one, right? So let's represent each of these as a multiple of 10. So 62.18, we really have 10 shares available at that price. So your first 10 shares you get for 62.18. And now there's a thousand shares available at 62.19. So your order fills at 62.19. So you've saved a considerable amount of money simply because there's more liquidity. There's more shares available at each possible price point. Now, you're probably still thinking, okay, what does this have to do with Binance converting cryptocurrencies? Well, to illustrate this point, I have come up with a completely bogus made up spreadsheet, right? The numbers here I understand are completely unrealistic, but it will illustrate our point. 
what I've done is I've created three separate trading markets. Now, in general, when we trade cryptocurrencies, we do th this through something known as a trading pair. So Bitcoin versus Ethereum, that means if I'm selling Ethereum for Bitcoin, by definition, someone is doing the opposite, right? If I'm buying Bitcoin with Ethereum, someone else is buying Ethereum with Bitcoin. We want to get the cryptocurrency that we're trading against. I don't want to trade Ethereum for Bitcoin and get Cardano or Polkadot, right? However, there are some cryptocurrencies that are designed to be extremely similar, specifically cryptocurrencies called stablecoins that maintain the value of $1. So in the past, we might have had three different cryptocurrency markets that were all essentially trading dollars against Bitcoin. Market one might have been USDC against Bitcoin, so we're trading Bitcoin for a dollar-denominated stablecoin. We might have had USDP against Bitcoin, which is trading Bitcoin for a dollar-denominated stablecoin. We might have had BUSD, which is trading Bitcoin for, you guessed it, a dollar-denominated stablecoin. So essentially, we had three markets operating separately that were basically doing the same thing. So what Binance said is, let's just combine these into one market. And again, I'm not saying this was a good decision. I want to show you kind of the theoretical justification for why this could possibly help cryptocurrency traders. So let's suppose you're trying to buy two cryptocurrencies, right? It doesn't even matter what they are. Let's just call it Bitcoin, even though the price is unrealistic. If you're trying to trade Bitcoin in market one, let's call that our USDC market, you want to buy two Bitcoin. You can see that there is one coin available for sale at $1. So just as in our previous order book example, that first coin costs you a dollar. There are no more coins that anyone is willing to sell for a dollar. So to get that second coin, you have to pay a dollar fifty. Now, you can see here that in other markets, people are willing to trade one coin for a dollar, but that's in the USDC market and you're trading with BUSD. So you can't access that unless you trade your USDC for BUSD, then go to the BUSD to Bitcoin market. So let's just combine them. So what we do, we take the one coin at a dollar from market one and we add in the one coin for a dollar at market two and there's no coins for a dollar at market three. So essentially the first item on our order book, our consolidated order book, is now two coins at a price of a dollar each. To continue building out that order book, we see that the next available price point is one coin for a dollar ten. That would be our second item. Then after that, we would see, okay, there's one coin for a dollar twenty in market three, and we would keep building out the order book, consolidating uh, the coins that are for sale. So in the secondary market, when we have combined liquidity, because we're now just trading against dollar-denominated stablecoins and not specific stablecoins, we can get two coins for a dollar each. So we save 50 cents, right? So that's the logic and theory behind combining these, uh, these markets, enhancing the liquidity. Again, I'm not saying this was a good move by Binance. I'm not saying it was bad. I'm just trying to, number one, illustrate how liquidity works, show why it's important. Remember, liquidity means that our price is going to deviate less based on what we were expecting. And then three, give kind of the theoretical justification for why combining liquidity could possibly uh, help traders. But as with all of my videos, like I said, not financial advice. However, I still hope that you did get something out of the video. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.